Today we are talking about Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup on the Nintendo GameCube. This game also came out on the PlayStation 2, but I recorded footage directly off of my GameCube using a capture card and HDMI converter. These are my unscripted and random thoughts of the game after spending some time with it over the last few days. Make sure you hit subscribe if you're not already, like the video and drop a comment down below. Let me know what other games you want me to check out. Anyway, with the new Quidditch Champions game coming out very, very soon, I wanted to take a look at the previous Quidditch game that came out years and years ago. I've had this game in my collection for a while, and I remember playing it back in the day, and it actually holds up pretty well. It's an interesting take on uh, on Quidditch. It, it plays well. You, you do get to mostly play as, um, as the Chasers, I think is what they're called. As the Chasers with the Quaffle, you're trying to score goals. Um, every now and then, whenever a bludger is coming by, you do get the chance to take control and try to hit the other balls at the enemy team whenever they're, you know, chasing to try to get a goal. And you can pass back and forth. You're kind of controlling uh, a group of three chasers at one time while you can pass. And yeah, it's, it's a good game. It's fun. There's three different goals to throw at. It, it works similarly to how it did in the movies and in the books. And it's very fast paced. There's a lot going on. Um, for fans of the franchise, there is a lot of cool details and a lot of cool stuff that you don't get elsewhere. Um, this is the intro cinematic here, and they did a nice job kind of building up the hype. It does a good job of establishing, you know, that it is set within the same universe as the books and the movies. It's got the same likenesses. Um, there are a lot of the same titular characters, you know, obviously Harry Potter, Draco Malfoy. Uh, the captain of the Ravenclaw team is Cho Chang, of course. And it's got a lot of the same named characters from the books and movies that you will recognize and remember. Um, the game is split into a few parts. Whenever you first start up, you choose the Hogwarts Cup as the first campaign. Uh, that takes you through the tutorial where you learn how the game works. You learn the different moves and controls and different positions. And then you play through the House Cup of Hogwarts where you play against the different teams. And once you win that, you do collect, you know, there are things you collect by doing well. You can collect little like trading cards to give you different abilities and things like that. And you can collect um, different, you know, just collectibles along the way. And once you get through the Hogwarts Cup, you get to go on to the World Cup. That's kind of the big draw of this game, at least for me. Um, you, you get to play outside of just Hogwarts, so you get to take on uh, teams from around the world, you get to play in different um, matches in different stadiums in different countries, you can play as the USA, England, um, I believe there's Austria, I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of other European countries, and uh, stuff like that is really neat because most of the, the movies and the books don't really show or talk about other parts of the world very much. So it was very interesting to me back whenever I first played this growing up to see, you know, a USA team, you know, like that was such an incredible idea to me because the movies are obviously not within the USA and the um, Fantastic Beast movies have recently gone to, you know, the, the state side, but, you know, those don't really hit the same. And it, it was just so cool getting to see, um, you know, the different teams for the different countries and you know, even though the teams don't really play very differently, it's mostly a cosmetic difference. It was still like surface level interesting enough just to appeal, you know, and kind of offer you something that was unique because, you know, most of the other games really just focus on emulating the movies and don't really do much else. They don't really stray too far away from that. And so this game, I thought, did a nice job of giving you something a little different. Whenever you first start up with the Hogwarts Cup, you get to select your team, you know, which house you want to pick. I obviously pick Ravenclaw because they're the best. And from there, you get to try out different um, challenges. Those are basically the tutorials of teaching you how, how to pass the ball, how to shoot for the goal, how to do different evasions, how to tackle, how to... Um, do like special moves and then finally how to control the seeker at the end of the match whenever you have to catch the snitch um, So passing I, I found a little weird because in the tutorial there are rings that make it seem like you're gonna see rings during a match But you don't I guess the rings are just there to simulate good timing um, It was a little weird uh, as you can see I struggled a little bit trying to get this down correctly um, but it ultimately doesn't really matter. You just have to complete the challenges to unlock the matches that let you progress the game. 
Um, so you can see here, after I got through the Hogwarts Cup, I decided to go into the World Cup. And you can also do exhibition matches where you can play any team against any other team. Uh, so this is USA versus England. We're playing on the USA map, um, which is oddly enough, like Halloween themed. I guess it's like a fall thematic setting. Um, but yeah, whenever they throw up the, the qualifier at the beginning, you can jump in to try to grab it. And we'll, you know, I'll, I'll just play a bunch of gameplay here in the background. You cannot control your elevation, which I found a little annoying at first. You can't go up or down. You just go from side to side across the field, um, which takes away some of the strategy. And, you know, it makes it a little bit less interesting. But overall, the game was quite easy. This was like, you know, the first time I played this game in a long time. And I never gave up a single goal. Um... You know, you don't even control the keeper. You don't you don't control the person blocking the goals at all. That's all automated. But as you can see, um, I just had the had the quaffle like the entire time. You know, it was very difficult for them to ever get many shots just because I always held on to it. You can see at this point it's already seventy to zero. Um, you know, the game ends once the snitch is caught, just like it does in the books and movies. Um, so right here is the snitch has now released. It's already the score is 240 to zero. And the way that it works is you have to boost to catch up to it. But the only way that you can get boost is by staying inside the yellow trail. So this is probably the most interesting part of the game. I found it really fun. Um, overall, this, this game is uh, simple. It's a nice fan service. They do some nice things. They expand the lore in interesting ways. It has me excited to play the new one because I'm curious to see how they're going to evolve the gameplay and create a full game out of it. I know you can like create your own character and all that kind of stuff in the new one, so I'm excited for that. Um, yeah, let me know what you think of this game. Have you played it yourself? Uh, make sure you subscribe, You know, hit like, leave a comment down below if you want to see other games. Thank you very much for watching.